please hit subscribe. For those of you who are still about to take the exam, here are a few more extra tips and resources that may help you with your preparation. Here is a tip for solving physics problems that seem hard. The idea is to use a quantity that remains constant. Something that you can anchor on, something that does not change regardless of the states. And that often comes in the form of conservation laws. The two most famous would be conservation of momentum and the conservation of energy. The conservation of momentum is often used in collision problems. And what it says is that the momentum or rather the sum of the momentums do not change, does not change. So the sum of the momentum before the collision, for example, is the same as the sum of the momentum right after the collision. And this is often useful when you are wanting to find one of the quantities involved in this, like the mass or the speed of one of the objects. The other is the conservation of energy. And this is useful when you are trying to find the work done or the final speed or something related to a quantity related to potential energy or the kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is just one half the mass times the square of speed. And potential energy is just the mass times the height, times the acceleration to gravity for gravitational potential energy. And problems involving those quantities may be simplified using this conservation of energy. You might want to look at problem 1-2 of the 2020 paper and problem 2-4 of 2020 paper to see how this is applied in the problems. If you are interested in learning a bit more and understanding the physics and the mathematics behind the problems, I recommend looking at Fundamentals of Physics by Halliday and Risnick or University Physics by Young and Friedman. These textbooks use calculus, but the calculus they use actually simplifies the physics, so I highly recommend them. When you encounter a mathematics problem that seems hard, what we can do is write down the given and then we look at the variables involved and we write down the relevant relationships. Sometimes it may be difficult to immediately think of a relationship when we do not see the given on paper. So it is important to actually write them down and see them rather than just imagine them in your head. And of course, it is important to get practice on the most commonly used tools. And that includes factoring, the quadratic formula, the polynomial remainder theorem, and the maximum and minimum techniques in parabolas. For those of you who are interested in reading a bit more on the solutions, I have found this on the internet. It is not for free. It costs you about 45 euros. I have not read this myself, so I really do not know how helpful it can be. However, if you are interested and you are willing to invest this amount of money, it may help you. For chemistry problems, what helps me a lot often is minding the units. I try my best to find the easiest way to obtain a unit from the given. And this works because often in chemistry, in computations in particular, most of these computations are straightforward proportionality computations. And so it's just a series of multiplications and divisions. And that's why sometimes just looking at the units would actually tell you which quantities to multiply with which. 
and also it is useful to mine the significant figures. Sometimes they give you values in the problems that have more significant figures than required. That makes the computations a little bit messier because of the number of digits that you have to manage. However, if you reduce these given to the required number of significant figures, it might be easier to carry out the computation. See problem 2-2 of the 2020 paper for an example. This website, chem.libretext.org, offers a lot of free chemistry resources, and they are also easily understood. So if you are interested, go have a look at their website and check out one of their many resources. For a paper textbook, I recommend Brown, Lime, and Burstyn's Chemistry the Central Science. It does not have much material on organic chemistry, but the other topics are well explained. Finally, I would like to encourage you to have a look at other channels in YouTube, such as Kome's channel. I do not know the person, but I know that he uploads solutions to mixed exam problems in English, undergraduate math A and B, specialized training math. He also uploads solutions to AJU exams. The AJU is the entrance exam to universities in Japan for foreign students, and there may be overlaps in the topics covered in the MEXT exam and the AJU exam. He has been doing this for many years, so he has uploaded many problems for many years. As I have only uploaded a few problems for a few exam papers, I reckon it would be beneficial for you to have a look at those that I haven't covered. Now, his solutions may be different from mine, and I've only seen some of his videos, so I really cannot say anything about the quality of all the videos. However, I still encourage you to have a look and decide for yourself. Hopefully in the future, I would have uploaded the solutions to all of the past papers. This concludes the extra tips and resources for the MEXT scholarship exams. I hope it was helpful and I wish you all the best on your exam. If you learned something new today, please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!